what are the five positions of the major scale? I don't know. Okay, that's not entirely true. I do know, but I didn't know until relatively recently. This came up for me because I would occasionally receive comments on my ad for my practice book, Morning Coffee, suggesting that the exercises it contains would be better practiced in all five positions of the major scale. And even though I have prepared counter arguments explaining the intent behind this book, I never fully understood what they were talking about. So eventually I looked it up and I learned that they're basically talking about modes, which was my assumption, but the major scale has seven modes, not five. I don't really visualize scales on the guitar as being in five positions like that. At times, maybe, but not always. So in this video, I wanna walk you through a little bit of how I approach practicing my scales and visualizing them on the guitar. First, let's just cover these so-called five positions. You can do this with any key, but we'll use G major because it's one of the more convenient keys for demonstrating this concept. I'm gonna try not to spend too much time demonstrating each thing. You can pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. The idea for all of these positions is that you primarily assign one finger per fret so that you don't need to shift along the strings, but a few of the positions require scooting one way or the other by one fret. Position one, you start with finger one at the second fret, finger two at the third fret, finger three at the fourth fret, and finger four at the fifth fret. Starting on the third fret, the fingers go two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two. Back down, two, one, four, two, four, three, one, four, three, one, four, two, one, four, two. That's a G major scale in two octaves. We've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. That's the first octave. From G, you continue with A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. I'm probably not going to keep doing that. Altogether a little quicker. degrees are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Back down, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, now in this position, you can go a little beyond those two octaves. You can go down to the seventh degree, F sharp, on the second fret, and, and you can go up to the second degree, A, on the fifth fret of the first string. When you include those other two notes, that encompasses the so-called first position of the major scale. Let's go to the second position. Here you'll play all the same notes that are found in G major, but because we've shifted along the neck, the finger pattern is going to be totally different, as will the others that follow. Now we're going to situate the first finger at the fifth fret and assign one finger per fret. This position will require a couple of small shifts. Saying the fingers out loud, we go one, three, four, one, four, except four is going to go on the seventh fret instead of the eighth. You do this to set you up for a shift. From here, one will come back to the fourth fret. Now it's one, two, four, one, two, four. And here one comes in to go to the fifth fret for another shift. Then three, four, one. Back down, one, four, three, one, four comes in for the shift, two, one, four, two, one, four, one comes in for the shift. Four, three, one. A 
little faster. One, three, four, one, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one. Back down. One, four, three, one, four, two, one, four, two, one, four, one, four, three, one. The notes. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Back down. A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A. Scale degrees. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. Back down. Two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And again, you can extend beyond those two octaves up here to degrees three and four. Within this, you can only play one octave of a G major scale. It's right here, G to G. That's not a bad thing or anything. You just get a lot of extension above and below it. I'll say now, if you're mapping out your scales this way, then you need to be aware of the location of every scale degree in a particular pattern. Position three will get situated at the seventh fret. This one won't require any shifting. The fingers go one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, one, two, four, one. That's two octaves, you can go two, four, if you wanna go further. Back down, one, four, two, one, three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one, four, two, one. down B A G F sharp E D C B A G F sharp E D C B scale degrees 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 Back down, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three. Just like in position two, you can only get one octave of the major scale in here, and it extends a bit beyond that above and below. Position four will start at the ninth fret. This will require one small shift. Fingers will be two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. One comes in for the shift. Three, four, one. Back down. One, four, three, one. Four comes in for the shift. Three, one. Four, two, one, four, two, one, four, two.
Notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. Back down D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D. Scale degrees five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Back down. Five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five. Once again, you can only get one octave of G major within this, and it extends above and below. Of that. Position 5 will start at the 12th fret. This one will also require a couple of shifts. Fingers 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 1, 4 comes in. 1, 2, 4, 1 comes in. 2, 4, 1. 3, 4, going up higher. Back down. 1, 4, 2, 1, Four comes in, two, one, four, one comes in, four, three, one, four, three, one. The notes E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. F sharp, G out on top. Back down. E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E. Scale degrees, six, seven, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Back down, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six. And again, your one octave of G to G sits here within this. Although you can't actually get a second octave in this pattern. That's all five positions. If you go up to the 14th fret and plot down the position one pattern, you've cycled back to where you started, just an octave higher. Those five positions are all connected to each other, and they cycle in that order as you work your way along the neck. start is just determined by the key you're playing in. 
So that's all well and good, but again, this isn't really how I frame all of this in my mind. I think more about the seven modes of the major scale when doing this sort of thing. If you don't know what a mode is, you can think of it as a scale that is derived from a parent scale, in this case, the major scale. If you take the major scale and you start and end it on each of its seven notes, you get a unique pattern of intervals or a unique mode for every scale degree. I'll show you what I mean. The first mode of the major scale is just the major scale itself. It's also called the Ionian mode. You would play it exactly the same way you play position one of the major scale. To play the second mode, you start and end on the second scale degree. In this case, we're taking the notes of G major, but starting and ending on A. This will be the same as position two. This is called the Dorian mode. The third mode, which starts and ends on the third scale degree, B in this case, will just be the same as position three. This is called the Phrygian mode. The fourth mode, called the Lydian mode, also lives in position three, but you start and end on the fourth scale degree, C in this case. The fifth mode, called the Mixolydian mode, is just position four, starting and ending on D. The sixth mode, called the Aeolian mode, is the same as position 5, going from E to E. The seventh mode, called the Locrian mode, lives back in position 1, just going from F sharp to F sharp. So to recap, the third and fourth modes of the major scale, Phrygian and Lydian, both live in position three, and the first and seventh modes, Ionian and Locrian, both live in position one. I frame it as seven modes rather than five positions. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, why does this distinction matter if you end up putting your fingers in the same places regardless? I mean, it kind of doesn't. I prefer the modes way of thinking about it because it gives equal consideration to all seven degrees of the scale. And when I think about musical implications, understanding of modes and their applications, this way of framing it all is a lot more airtight. But this isn't even the only way I work out scales on the fretboard. There are more ways to navigate them than what I just went over. You can also play them with strictly three notes on every string. <laughs> four notes per string. Or two notes per string. Or play along a single string. There's all these different directions that you can navigate a given scale. When I'm practicing my scales, that's one of the biggest things I focus on. In fact, it's the entire premise of my scale study series, The Left Hand Gauntlet. I'm going to cut myself off there at risk of making this video too overblown. Don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole. I think I'll do a follow-up video where I talk more about my rationale behind four note per string and two note per string patterns. But at the very least, hopefully you can walk away from this video with a better understanding of the five positions slash seven modes of the major scale on the guitar. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative and I'll see you in the next one.